No power pound on the table. Didn't insult anyone. Didn't yell or make angry faces. This better be a passing fad. Hey, f you action, stupid fool. Okay, first off, I don't hate America. Yes, yes we do. Because the consumer is supposed to win. Good morning, you filthy software pirates out there. How's it going? Uh, yeah, that's a reference to the video I just put out on Wednesday. It's about the Stam 78 uh, stereo compressor, which is absolutely unstam believable. Definitely check it out, especially if you're considering getting some hardware because it's way cooler than software. It sounds great and it'll last your whole life. You never have to upgrade it. That's one of the big advantages of hardware. Here's a little update what's going on. I just had a great big trip to Toronto. Got to walk around and do kind of something I used to do in my college days, you know, walk from like the Eaton Center over to Steve's Music and, uh, you know, just see the sights and the sounds and the smells of Toronto. And, you know, pretty cool experience. I got to hang out with Goron from Vicious Guitars. We went to the ramen joint, had this really cool diffusion on the wall. This looks like something I'd want to put in my own place because that's a great way to break up parallel surfaces. I uh, worked really well in the, like a small hallway of a restaurant. I think it'd be pretty cool in a drum room. I'm going to look at maybe possibly doing something like that at one point. Another cool thing was I got to go to Yorkville Sound and sat down with those guys and they had on display from the Rush R40 to it replicas of their original amps that they started out with that was really fucking cool as well not really a gigantic rush fan but you know as musicians i absolutely have a ton of respect for them the 2112 album i really liked let's put it that way but you know some of their 80s stuff eh, didn't quite do it for me let's put it that way anyway that was my week hope you're gonna have an amazing weekend let's get to your comments and questions right now american made guitars have become a joke i can buy a top of the line chinese epiphone prophecy series guitar with modern specs for 900 dollars, or i can spend three thousand dollars and get an american made gibson that has the same components they've been using since the 70s. Gibson and Fender are too busy trying to be luxury brands now and don't care about the consumer unless they own a yacht and go golfing on the weekends. Holy shit, dude, you hit the nail right on the head. Yeah, I will say this. I've, I've had a couple of those Epiphones in the studio. I've still got my Mustaine Epiphone uh, in the other room. Fucking phenomenal guitars. Very, very impressive what you get for the money you spend. No question about that there. And I think you've got a great point about Gibson and Fender becoming luxury brands, which is kind of fucking ridiculous when you think about it. Of course, this is all Oh, in reaction to the video I did on this K-Pro KS Custom, which is like 2200 US, it's not cheap, but it's an absolutely phenomenal guitar. And I think we're gonna see more and more guitars like this come out of China where we get really, really great build quality and it's still gonna be less than the Made in America stuff. So uh, it remains to be seen how the market will react to it, but competition is coming. And uh, isn't that a good thing in capitalism when there is competition because the consumer is supposed to win? Yeah, but not like that. Anyway, got a lot of comments on the video. Let's show a few of them off. Did you expect to be a go-to guitar reviewer when you started the show? No, the whole point of this show was to help people make better recordings and kind of have an idea of what to expect when they come into the studio. I just kind of fell into guitar reviews. I think one of the first guitars I ever reviewed was the Legator, that, that purple one I had. And, uh, you know, like I said, it just kind of happened, but I'm not complaining. That's that's for sure. I actually enjoy reviewing guitars. Uh, the, the big thing was for me anyway, around 2020, I sat down and talked to a couple of my friends. I'm like, okay, show me some exercises so I can learn how to play this thing a little bit better because if I'm going to be doing this for a living, um, I might want to be able to play the instrument at least somewhat competently. So a bunch of you guys have been saying, you know, uh, you've noticed a massive improvement in the playing and I am grateful for that. But it's all just basically sitting around watching Netflix and just doing finger exercises. That's really all there is to it. And my sole motivation for getting better on guitar was not so I could show off, oh, look at how awesome I am. It's just so I wouldn't have to call my friends up to come in and demo. They're, they're always more than welcome, but it just kind of slows the whole process down. The whole point here was so I could do my job more efficiently. Okay, guys, and uh, next part is we're gonna be a Spectre Sound. The lightning, the lightning around. around. I think you guys are really going to like this one. Again, this is in reaction to the uh, K-Pro review. Great tone. Why, thank you. Great tone. Dude, thank you very much. That clean tone. Wow, that is the first time I've ever been complimented on a clean tone in here. That's great. Thank you very much. Just don't tell Murray at Murray Guitar Pickups. Nice sound. Once again, thank you very much. That thing sounds amazing and looks fantastic as well. Super impressed. Job well done. If this is the sign of things to come, bring it on. Wow, I've gotten so many compliments on the tone on that video. Uh, just word to the wise guys, remember the guitar is essentially ballast. It all comes down to a speaker and mic combination. And I've got a really cool episode gonna be coming up on that where I break down how to get that sound 
and it's all centered around the Mojotone BV30H speaker. I think it's uh, fairly unique as far as speakers go. It's got a certain nice thing going on the top end. I think it's absolutely great, and I can't wait to use it on some more demos in here. What the fuck is that tone? Dude, considering almost 600,000 of you watched my videos last week and didn't hit the subscribe button, if you hit it, I swear I am going to make a video explaining how to get that tone. Looks cool, but sounds like shit. Push pillow did nothing. Neck and middle pickup sounded like ass. For that type of money, pickup rings would be nice. If you see cheap pickup blades, it'd be intense cheap. Found the Gibson owner. All right, guys, before we get into the herd of the week, just want to give you a reminder that my company, Spectre Digital, it's what funds this whole operation. If you like to see the crazy fucking videos I make, if you like the editing stuff, if you think my editors should have jobs and get paid for the work they do, head on over to Spectre Digital and grab yourself a copy of Element Bass because you can get tones like this. Once again, that's Element Bass, the most awesome bass amp sim plugin ever. It just sounds fucking wicked. We've also got Extinction Level Event 2.0 out, especially for all you guys who were asking about it. Yes, it's out. I've got a video coming out on that very soon as well. We've got a bunch of other really amazing stuff like the Cock Blocker Gate and stay tuned for Prism as well. That's still in pre-release right now. You can go play around with it if you want to try it out. Once again, everything's over at SpectreDigital.com. Now let's get into the butthurt of the week. It's because they used slave and child labor. Oh, I know. It's absolutely horrific situation in the United States right now. Like, they literally changed the laws to allow child labor. And, you know, what could possibly go wrong there? I mean, like, look at this. 15-year-old falls to his death on first day at roofing job, Fez. Say, now company owes. Yeah, and if you, you go a little deeper, I think that company had to pay like hundred to $150,000 for the death of that child on their job. I mean, like, wow, that's what your kid's life is worth? $100,000? What the actual fuck? You imagine being the parents of that kid. You, you, you're so proud of your kid going to get a job and then he falls to his fucking death because some motherfucker out there thought it'd be a great idea to change the laws so they can hire 15-year-olds and put them on roofs where they don't fucking belong. Look, I get it. Those in charge in the States are really upset because they can't hire people for shit wages anymore because fucking housing's too expensive. So, oh, I know. Let's change the laws so we can get kids up there to do the work. And if you talk about slave labor, we've already brought this up before, but if, if you see this, how many American companies like McDonald's, Wendy's, and Burger King are using slave labor from prisons because they're too fucking cheap to pay normal people decent living wages? Oh, 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 okay, hang on. I, I, I don't think you were mean in the States. I think you meant China. Oops, sorry. You can see how easy it is to get confused about that shit these days. Oh, and just for an encore here, hey, I think we got the mega, mega butthurt of the, of the week. week. Check this one out. This was the most salesy SSS video I've ever seen. Yeah, there's not only no reason Glenn is doing this. Look how clever, funny, and smart I appear from using sarcasm in a condescending way. Anyway, imagine shilling for a country whose literal legacy is shit quality instruments, even when the same CNC machines have been around for 40 years. This guitar will never live up to smaller and better action American instruments. Comparing this company like Gibson is like the equivalent of comparing Walmart to a Sam's Michael's little shop in your local town. I know, how dare I compare this guitar to a Gibson? I mean, I couldn't find any cracks in the paint anywhere. All right, Glenn, we all know you hate America. Try putting that guitar up against a sir, then we can talk. You obviously have an issue with Gibson, and you always conveniently leave out the superior made in USA guitars that would absolutely crush your opinions on this guitar. Try again. Okay, obviously I need to break this down for you because you're upset about things I never actually said. Uh, you're just mad at things you've misconstrued as me saying. Okay, first off, I don't hate America. Not not in the slightest. Um, I've got a lot of American friends. I think America is a very cool place. I've just got issues with American labor laws and how they treat their employees. I've got a big fucking problem with that because there's so much money out there and yet it's all going to the people at the top and the people actually doing the work and making these companies successful are left with crumbs and can't afford to live anywhere. That's a big fucking problem. And if you think blindly supporting these companies is ever gonna change anything, you're out of your fucking mind. So yes, that's why I criticize. That's why I bring this shit up. It's like, hey, oh, nobody wants to work anymore. Really, did you try paying them? Really not that difficult. 
As for Sir Guitars, I would love to get one on the show. And if you'd actually been paying attention, I did a review on the Fender American Ultra Strat, and uh, that guitar was absolute perfection. It was just beautiful, right out of the box. I didn't have to change anything. And that's actually what convinced me to keep most of my guitars in standard tuning, because I picked it up, started playing it, and I had so much fun. And I'm like, oh, this reminds me of when I was a kid. You know, I, I really enjoyed playing in that. So I started leaving most of my guitars in standard tuning instead of down tuning them like I had been doing for the last 20 years, because that Fender was so much fun fun to play. Yes, there are great American guitars out there, absolutely. But if America doesn't wake up, they are going to get steamrolled by companies like this that are building extremely high quality instruments. That's not just opinion. That's going to fucking happen. We've seen it happen time and time and time again, where American industry gets a little too comfortable and relies on its legacy rather than putting out super high quality stuff. And then they just get annihilated by foreign competition. If you need any confirmation on that, look at what happened to the Zenith Television Company or Kodak. You're a great storyteller, Glenn. Nice to see someone on YouTube speaking like an actual human nowadays. Well, thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. And I've noticed a lot of you guys said, wow, your videos are getting so much better these days. And that's because I understand, you know, there's people on the other side of this camera. You know, those aren't just num numbers. Those are real people. And I want to keep you guys entertained. So I did a lot of research into how to make my videos better. And a lot of it centers around telling stories. So that's what I've been doing. That's why I've been doing less videos, but uh, they've had more impact, shall we say. I'd rather make a video that gets 100,000 views than do five videos that I get 20,000 views uh, because I think you guys deserve to be fucking entertained. And um, I understand it. You know, it's like we've got all this entertainment on our fingertips. So if you're going to give me some of your time, I'd better fucking earn it. That's the way I see it anyway. But I do appreciate the compliment. Thank you so much. Yeah, please do a comparison between the old one and remastered. I'm often encountering this problem. Like, wow, the remastered one. It must be even better. Shut up and take my money. And then I'm not so sure. It usually feels like whoever did the remastered just run it through overturn noise gate or something. Oh, yeah. We brought up the subject of remasters there last week and I got quite a few people asking about if I can do uh, a deep dive into this. So it, I'm, I'm considering it. It's going to take a little bit of time to put together, especially researching and trying to find old original masters uh, instead of the remasters. Like finding the remasters is real fucking easy. A lot of it, I think, is just marketing where it's like, hey, check out this new remastered version of this awesome album we did so they can get people to pay again for the same thing that they already own. That's really the big motivation behind that. I have noticed the trend of remasters sounding crap for a few years now. The Black Album remasters was one where no nearly as good as my old one. The reason I was told is because modern remasters of everything are aimed towards streaming, where the producer turns up the volume on parts that are supposed to be quiet. Well, the thing is, Spotify put that to bed there a few years ago. They said, okay, we're going to put this the streaming platform on, but there's no more overmastering crap. Like, we had a big problem with that from, like, about the early 2000s to about 2015, where they just make the discs louder and louder and louder and louder and louder. And I think that's what that's what happened. It's like, you know, the record company looks at this record that they've got, say, the Black Album, said, oh, well, we need to make this louder like everything else so it'll compete. And that was the stupid thing. It, it was like a bunch of fucking lemmings. It's like, oh, we need to compete. That is, like, the dumbest reason to do anything ever as far as art's concerned. Art isn't a fucking competition. It's about making something entertaining. And, you know, just fucking pancaking a fucking mix on one of the greatest metal albums ever is really fucking dumb. I actually have an original print of the Black Album. I'm going to try and dig up a remaster then and see what they've done and we, if we can compare it to because I think that's going to be a pretty interesting video. Thanks for the inspiration, guys. I got to say, you know, this is why I do viewers' comments if everybody wonders why I do this week after week after week after week because I get some of my best ideas for the show from you guys uh, on your perspective. It's like, oh, okay, that's really cool. I can fucking investigate that. And that's where we're like 449 episodes into this like it's gonna be 10 years this summer that i did the first ever viewers comments and um i've got to do some kind of retrospective i think because uh there have definitely been, been some interesting moments over the years that's for sure we need transition sound effects graphics and video clips for every phrase that you say now it's over the top yes yes we do why because there's plenty of fucking boring videos out there already excuse me for trying to keep you entertained here's an idea stop bitching so much all right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And once again, hit the fucking subscribe button. It would really go a long way in helping me make better videos for you guys. And that's the whole point. I want you guys to enjoy the fucking show. So throw me a freaking bone. Treat the subscribe button like you treat the Reaper Still Evaluating button. Click it because it's free. All right. I'll see you guys next time. I got a very interesting video coming up based off a couple of your 
very intelligent comments when it comes to guitar tone. Uh, we're going to be doing a deep dive and I'm going to show you guys some cool techniques about recording guitar, including my new super secret weapon mic. I think you guys are going to like. I'll see you next week. That should be out like Wednesday or Thursday. Until then, have a great weekend and stay safe. I'll see you next time. To the doing. You know, sound. Okay, good. Spill my coffee. Fuck. No. Oh, and, and, and hey, uh, oh. Fuck. Hey, okay, let's not do that again. Oh, Ziz, go crazy on this one. Thanks, Ziz.